What's up everyone, China Cycling here and I am pumped today to be bringing you guys this, the Insta360 Go 3. Now long time viewers of the channel will know I've been a paying Insta360 customer long before they started sponsoring my channel, but for the Go 3, it, we've taken it a step further. So I've actually been a member of their pre-launch test team, helping them for the past half a year or so, trying to make this a better product for cyclists. It was really cool, I gave them some feedback, how to make it better for you guys to use out on the road, they listen to that feedback and put it into the product so I'm pumped and excited that this is going to be something that you guys like. Let's check it out. Now, what is the Go 3? Well, of course, it's a successor to the Go 2, uh, which was a great little camera. You could put it everywhere or whatever, but the thing was, it lacked a proper screen, so you could never quite see what you were shooting. Uh, but now, with the Go 3, they've added this. It's what they're calling the action pod. And in there, it goes in there, you've got a flip up screen, and then you can see what you're shooting, a touch screen to change your settings on the fly, etc., etc. So, yeah, this is what they're calling the action pod, and the unit kind of like goes in and out by pressing this button, and it's held in there really firm with magnets, so it's not gonna come out no matter what kind of riding you're doing. Uh, so, on its own, this thing already has a huge battery life. This has like 45 minutes battery life which is like 50% more than the Go 2 used to have. But when you put it in here, in this case, that battery life goes up to 170 minutes. So way longer than any crit, at almost three hours, like that's gonna run out of battery uh, after I run out of carbs on the road. So the action pod is kind of like a battery bank mothership kind of thing, but also it's got your screen on here. So if we turn it on, so obviously full color screen on here, you can see what you're shooting, but the amazing thing is, even when you take it out of the case, you still can see what the camera is seeing. So there's actually a wireless connection between these two. And what does that mean? I can have this, the camera on the back of my bike looking backwards, and I can have this mounted on my handlebar, and I can see who's behind me, see how close they are. If it's a good shot, I can press record on this, and the camera on the back will start recording. Super, super cool. Opens up a whole new range of possibilities for getting cool, exciting shots and stuff. Uh, for me personally, when I used to try to get interesting shots with the camera mounted somewhere you can't reach, you'd have to press record before you start riding, and then you get to the nice place for the shot, blah, 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 blah. You finish the shot, you get off the bike, press stop again. When you're editing, you've got like a three minute video file for like the 10 seconds you want it to use. This totally gets rid of that problem. Press the button on the action pod, the camera starts and stops recording. You can see what's recording in real time, make any adjustments to your exposure or whatever. Super, super cool. So headline stats, you've got this tiny little camera here which can do 2.7K of video footage at 30 frames per second. Battery life, as I said, absolutely huge. 45 minutes for this thing alone or 170 minutes when it's in the action pod. You've now got two microphones on there as opposed to one to kind of help out with uh, canceling out noise, to help cancel out wind noise and stuff. In terms of storage, there's three versions available, 32 gigs, 64 gigs, or 128 gigs. So that's gonna depend on how often you like dumping footage onto your computer or onto your phone. Uh, but for me personally, the 64 gigabytes is enough. Uh, but it's only $30 more for the 128 gig version, so maybe it's worth going for the 128. So let's get cracking and see what comes in the box. So obviously, this being YouTube, every unboxing is fake. I've already opened this before, but all the Insta360 stuff is super nicely packaged. Uh, when you get it, the, the unit itself is looking at you and the action pod is in the box. Uh, so in the box, you've got the unit itself, you've got the action pod, uh, you've got this, this guy is really cool. So he's got a sticker on the back and he can stick onto a whole bunch of things, but the sticker is kind of not a single use, it's reusable. I'm sure if you keep sticking on things for ages and ages, it eventually loses its stickiness, but like if you want to stick it onto a table surface, even to a wall, the inside of your windscreen, that does the job for that. And then to go with that or to go with other stuff, to go with a tripod head, you've got this swivel head, uh, both the unit and the action pod use this magnetic clamping system. So it goes on there super quick and then it's not coming off. And then to take it off, you just press these little buttons on the side and you come off. And again, if you're shooting with just the unit, same sort of deal. The unit goes on here and again, not coming off until you press the buttons and then 
you come off. So you can either you can either shoot with just the unit on a mount, or you can put the unit in the action pod and then put it onto the mount as well. So it's going to depend if you want something light. Obviously, when you're on the bike and you've got a selfie stick or an extender pole or something, you want to put as little weight on there as possible. And lots of these GPS mounts, they're not designed to take that much weight, yeah? So in those kind of situations, you just want to put just the unit itself on there. Uh, but if you have a sturdy amount or you need a longer battery life, then you can just mount the action pod itself with the camera in there on there. Like I said, my preferred setup is put this on the front of the bike and then maybe put the camera somewhere else on the bike and then control the camera with this that's mounted on the handlebars. Uh, also in the package is the magnetic pendant. So again, we go over, we go in, and then we get the unit. Uh, obviously, I've got my mic in the way here, so excuse the noise, but yeah, we could just mount it up here. Now, one thing that I fed back to the team is when you're riding like this, this is fine when you're standing up, but as soon as you go into the road bike position, all you can see now is your knees. So they came up with a solution for that with this little wedge. So this wedge goes on there. So again, with this wedge, we can add the wedge. Again, it's all magnetic. Add the wedge to the pendant, put it back in under your jersey, and then put the camera on there. And now, because it's pointing up, when you go into the drops position, you can actually see where you're going. So that's a super cool thing that I think all cyclists, especially roaders, will appreciate. So obviously out on the bike, especially if you're a roadie, a weight weenie, we don't want to be hulking around a big camera all the time. And so obviously that's where the Go3 shines the most. Uh, it's absolutely huge. Sorry. It's absolutely tiny size and it's even lighter weight. So often I've just got this mounted underneath my Garmin or, or on my cap or on my body and I've got this just in my pocket. And basically I'll get a bunch of shots with this and if the battery's starting to get low after around 45 minutes of shooting, whatever, I'll put it in here. If I'm still wanting to shoot some, I can just shoot like this. But usually the kind of riding I'm doing, I'm going to a place, getting a few shots, then moving to another place, getting a few shots. And I'll just put this in here in my back pocket and by the time I get to my next shot, it'll be charged and ready to go for another 45 minutes of shooting so cool setup and then obviously with the built-in screen i can review the shots i've just taken i don't need to look at them on my phone or anything like that so super convenient super quick and just yeah a big step forwards over the go-to which always had you connecting on your phone to make sure the footage looked good now i don't need to do that while i'm riding along i can just flip out this use the touch screen check out the shot okay perfect move on to the next shot uh, mounting it on the bike. So actually I have my bike behind me here with a bunch of the mounts that I was using. But yeah, so basically the most important thing when you're using an action camera on the bike is just how to mount it and where to mount it to get the best shots. Now, one thing I do recommend getting, which isn't included, is this. They call it the quick release mount, I believe. And basically it's the same magnetic setup I was just showing you, but at the back, it's got these two little legs that uh, fold out to turn it into a, a traditional action style mount, or as we guys call it, a GoPro mount. Yeah. So again, once this is on here, you can basically attach this to any place where you'd be able to mount a traditional action camera like your GoPro or whatever. So obviously a whole bunch of mounts out there to put them on your handlebars. I've even got one here that goes on my quick release so I can put it on the quick release on my bike. Uh, yeah, and then you're free to mount it anywhere you want. Included in the box is a mount for mounting on a cap. And if you've got a cycling cap, you can actually mount it up here. That's a really cool like uh, first person kind of perspective. You look a bit dumb with a third eye sticking out your head, but you do get some cool shots. One reason you get such cool shots with the camera up here, number one is because it's, you know, first person view, it's so close to your eyes. What people are seeing is what you're seeing. But the second reason is that your head is naturally stabilized, yeah? Even when the road's really bouncy, our heads stay really still. But speaking of stabilization, the stabilization, stabilization on this thing is crazy good. So. I'll go into it in a minute, but there are two ways to shoot with the camera, kind of like a normal video mode and then a free frame video mode is what they call it. And uh, so with the free frame video mode or with a normal mode, uh, it adds their own flow state stabilization. But one difference being in normal video mode, as soon as you get the files out of the camera, they're already stabilized. But if you use the free frame, like the kind of like pro mode, you have to use their own software to stabilize it later. But I can use this to show you what the pre-stabilized and post-stabilized footage looks like so you guys can appreciate just how good the stabilization thing is on this. Uh, 
uh, especially if you're doing gravel or any other sort of like rough terrain, you really want good st stabilization. Especially if the camera is mounted on the bike, obviously if you've got it on your handlebars or especially down here on the quick release, any vibrations in the road are going to go straight in through to the camera. So your camera needs to have good stabilization and the Go 3 stabilization is up there with the best. But yeah, as I alluded to earlier, one of the most impressive things to me was just having these two things separately. So, you know, either this is on the back of my bike or down on the quick release or underneath the handlebars or somewhere where it's not easy to reach. And then this, the action pod, is either in my hands or also mounted somewhere else on the bike. And if I'm on the gravel bike, I'll probably put it in my top tube bag. And again, I can just see what I'm seeing. I can record when I need to record. I can... They auto power off if you don't touch them for five minutes. Uh, yeah. And again, so now they've auto powered off, but if I turn on the action pod here by pressing the button on here, you'll notice the action pod turns on and the camera turns on too. So they're always kind of synced with each other and straight away I can see exactly what the camera can see. So really cool. Again, I turn off the action pod and the camera goes off too. So super cool. You can always use this to control the camera no matter where it is mounted on the bike. So my situation is a bit different to your average riders because obviously I'm a YouTuber. Uh, but one thing I found myself doing was put this on the guy's bike in front of me looking back at me and then I have this because I know when I want to start recording and stop recording and stuff. So mounting this on your friend's bike and controlling it with this on your own bike again opens up a whole new world of shots you can get etc. Uh, the flip screen is obviously really useful as well so being able to just to flip it out so then you can vlog yourself record yourself and see what you're seeing on the screen the the angle of the lens is super wide so you, even at arm's length you can get kind of a good shot of yourself and the scenery behind you and then it just tucks right down too uh, the unit itself the go 3 is waterproof it's waterproofed up to five meters underwater so any of your basic swimming obviously is fine but uh, any rainstorm is also absolutely no problem for it. The action pod itself is not waterproof, so uh, it's water resistant. I think it's IPX54, so you know, splash proof and a little bit of rain, it'll be fine, but don't let it get in the water. So again, if you are going out on a ride and it does start raining crazy heavy, I just put this back away in a bag or somewhere waterproof and you can still keep shooting with this. So. Not a big problem, just something to be aware of. One other big step up I found from the Go 2 was this now has two mics built in as opposed to the Go 2 just having one mic. The advantage of having two mics is the camera can do some clever maths to figure out what is your voice and what isn't your voice and try to cancel out some of that wind noise. One good thing about the Go 3, however, is uh, it's waterproof. Which you kind of need on a day like today. It's never gonna be as good as like a dedicated mic with a dead mouse, uh, with a dead cat on it, uh, but it's usable and uh, you know, from what most people are gonna be using it for, it's absolutely fine. Uh, so as I alluded to earlier, there are kind of like two main ways to film with this thing. There's like the normal video mode and then there's the free frame mode or like the pro mode. Uh, it's gonna depend on what kind of user you are. If you're just a casual user, just want some footage to throw up on social media or whatever, just use the standard video mode. It'll make your workflow a lot quicker. Uh, but if you are a bit of a, a, a budding cinematographer or a bit of a video geek, you can use the free frame mode. Advantage of the free frame mode is you can basically kind of adjust it in post. So if you shot in 16 by nine and then later you realized you want it in nine by 16 for social media, you can, instead of just cropping a tiny slither of the 16 by nine, you can reframe the whole thing and get footage that you couldn't see before. And it's kind of a similar story with the editing as well. You can take it like the super easy, like casual route or you can go the super nerdy, like pro route. So if you're into the more casual stuff, you can connect to the camera with your phone you don't even need to download the footage onto your phone. You can choose the shots you want and it's basically pulling the footage off the camera over Wi-Fi and then either edit yourself or just let the AI like single click edit the whole thing for you and then export the video. So a whole bunch of features uh, to support either the casual user or the more hardcore user. So that's really cool. Uh, if you are a huge video nerd and you want to know more about bit rates and stuff like that, I'm sure some of the bigger dedicated video uh, channels have done a more in-depth review in that. But I just wanted to tell you guys what this was like for out there riding. So its main competition is going to depend on what kind of a rider you are, what kind of footage you're after. Uh, so the Insta360 X3 and the other 360 cameras 
Uh, I think they're their own kind of thing. Like if you're into 360 video, etc., this is not going to be a replacement for that because it doesn't shoot 360. But shooting 360, it's a bit more complicated. It takes a bit more time. You can get cool, cool shots, but some people just don't want the complication. Some people just want a more simple experience. What you see is what you get, and that's what the Go 3 offers. So in that kind of sense, I think it's competing more with like the GoPros of the world. But the biggest advantage over the GoPro is that with this, you have the choice of having super small, super discreet, put anywhere camera, or put it in the action pod, and essentially you've got what would be the equivalent of a GoPro. So in that sense, you've kind of got two cameras in one. Uh, the video image quality, uh, maybe down the line, I'll do a, a test if you guys want to see it between it and the GoPro Hero 11. Video quality wise, like if you have a bigger dedicated kind of like larger action camera, like the Insta360 uh, One RS with a one inch sensor, or something like a GoPro Hero 11, blah, blah, blah. If you really start pixel peeping, maybe you can tell the difference, but for most people out there, especially if you're just watching the footage on your phone, you cannot tell the difference at all. This thing, like I say, 2.7K resolution, it's a higher resolution than your phone, probably a higher resolution than your computer monitor too, so more than enough for most people. Uh, in terms of what it's competing with as well, obviously we're going to talk about price. So there are three versions, as I said in the beginning. You got a 32 gig version, 64 gig version, or 128 gig version. And the prices are uh, $379.99, $399.99, or $429.99 respectively. So cheaper than a GoPro. It's got two cameras in one, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but everything has pros and cons, you know, this video isn't an advert, it's still, you know, a, uh, everything has pros and cons, everything has advantages and disadvantages, and I'm here to tell you those. So for me, four main advantages, we've got the battery life, the battery life on this thing is, is crazy, crazy good. And uh, number two, we've got the picture quality, uh, as you've seen it in the footage like this, I think the picture quality is great. Number three is the tiny size, so when you've got just the go through on its own, you can mount it anywhere, super light, even the most strict of weight wieners won't complain. And number four for me is like the remote control feature that I talked about of having the unit and the action pod separately, but still being able to control the unit. So they're the four main advantages to me. Uh, disadvantages, I think I've only really got two disadvantages to go for. And uh, number one is the beep when you start recording or when you turn the unit on. So when we start recording, we press record and you get a beep to let you know you've started recording, and then you press it again, and you get that sound to let you know you've stopped recording. In here, in my quiet studio, it sounds fine, but when you're out there, if you if the camera's on your helmet, or if the camera's somewhere else, and there's a wind noise blowing by you, by you that beep can be hard to hear. So obviously you've got the Tanner light on there, you can see if it's blinking red, you know you're recording, and you've got the action pod as a screen, so you can see on there if it's recording too, but sometimes if you've got just the unit on your helmet and the action pod's in your pocket or something, you press record, you're not quite sure if you heard the beep or not, did you press it, didn't you press it? That's a bit of a bummer. I wish they'd make the speaker a little bit louder. And uh, the final nitpick is that it's got 2.7K. I wish it had 4K. Again, as I just said, most people watching this stuff on their phone, they can't tell the difference, but for me, a bit of a video nerd who likes to obsess over details 4k would be nice but again 2.7k is plenty for this camera and who this camera is aimed at okay but that about wraps it for this quick look at the insta360 go 3 like i say super light super pocket sized it's worth taking out with you on almost every ride uh, i'm going to keep it in my pocket i'm going to keep it even in my saddle bag uh, yeah this is my new kind of like go-to grab footage camera uh, actually, a bunch of the videos you've seen on this channel recently have been using footage from this camera. Like I say, I've been testing ver various test versions and stuff over the past few months. And yeah, it's been a really great tool. If you are in the market for an action camera on your bike, I think this is the one to go for. Like I say, I said the only thing I'd extra get is the quick release mount. This thing, oh, if you put it on the right way. This thing means you can just open it up to a whole bunch of other accessories on the market and gives you more mounting options. The legs close down, bada bing, bada boom. If you are thinking of getting one, if you can use the link in the description down below, that does help out the channel. If you've made it this far of the video, I think I've deserved a like, give me a thumbs up please. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, 
hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and you'll see more videos when they come out. But yeah, thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. I've been working with them for a long time. It's been great seeing this product in development, and I'm glad it's finally here. And that wraps about it for today. China Cycling, out. Oh. Evening, ladies. Good evening. How's it going? Good morning. How's it going? Yep. Cheers. Good morning.